The life of a pirate. Treasure, freedom, parrots, eye patches, and shouts of... What's not to love? Well, the reality was a little less romantic than Disney may have led you to believe. A pirate's life was regimented, and almost everything was punished by death or marooning, which is really just another way to say death anyway. So being a pirate actually kind of sucked. To truly understand the horrors and surprisingly strict rules pirates impose, this video will put you into the shoes of a typical swashbuckling no-gooder from the days of yore and the end of the golden age of piracy. This here is Henry. Let's pretend Henry is you. Henry is part of Black Bart's pirate crew, sailing aboard the Royal Fortune. A Welsh buccaneer, Black Bart, otherwise known as John Roberts or Bartholomew Roberts, was a Welsh pirate who terrorized the Caribbean in the early 1700s, the golden age of piracy. The Royal Fortune sails near Wida in present-day Benin. On this typical Monday morning in February 1722, Henry wakes up early in his hammock below deck. Hammocks are a valuable piece of kit in any large ship. Sailors were often injured or even died from being thrown out of their bunks during rough seas. Hammocks sway with the swell, making them much safer. Nevertheless, the sleeping quarters are still crammed and airless and come with a total lack of regard for anything such as personal space. Henry pushes his way along the lower deck toward the staircase. It's breakfast time, and he's hungry to scoff down. Oh no. It's the same thing yet again. Bread. But not fresh bread. There's nowhere to cook it. Hard tack biscuits. See you and me? That's dried, dehydrated bread. A foodstuff of a similar consistency to brick or rock. Oh well, Henry doesn't have a choice. He washes it down with the rum. Henry never used to be an alcoholic, but the fresh water is contaminated with a green sludge of toxic algae, and, well, the rum makes it taste better. Might even help kill some of the bad stuff. Who knows? Either way, he's been dependent on rum for months, and he seems to be doing just fine. Well, so far as he can remember, if he's lucky, someone might find a sea turtle for dinner, or the chefs might brew up salmagundi, a stew where each pirate contributes something from their personal collection. But, in reality, it'll probably be beef jerky again. Not lush, tender jerky. This stuff resembles tree bark. Better than nothing, but everyone still suffers from scurvy to some degree or another. Only the rum, water, and lime infusion known as grog, and the occasional mango, do anything to stem the joint pain and eventual death. It's tough being a pirate for Henry, but don't worry, things will soon get much, much worse. It's a Monday, so the musicians start playing. They had yesterday off, but they're required to play, and play with vigor, every other day of the week. Henry listens to their jaunty tunes as he sits down to clean his cutlass and pistols. They must always be ready for battle. Henry takes it seriously, mostly because disobeying Bart's laws usually results in death. A pirate's life isn't quite the romantic outlaw proposition he signed up for. Gambling, women, stealing, and manipulating are all actually forbidden and come with grave punishments. He doesn't want to be the next person to suffer at the hands of the ruthless captain. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Captain Black Bart walks up behind him. He seems a pleasing gentleman, all dressed up in fine clothes and gold jewelry. If Henry hadn't seen him hang, torture, maroon, drown, and execute more men than he could count, he might have thought him to be a governor or even a close friend of King George. Black Bart speaks with a Welsh lit angry at the recent loss of his consort ship, the Great Ranger, to a Royal Navy Galleon, the HMS Swallow. Incensed, he's ready to exact his revenge on his adversary, Captain Ogle. Henry had better get to work. It's a busy day ahead. Orders coming left, right, and center. Henry ties knots, raises flags, and otherwise runs to and fro. They can see the swallow in the distance. They're sizing each other up, getting ready for a fight. Henry starts to feel a pang of nerves. It's a big ship with a lot of guns, probably about the same as they have. But they've had no problems capturing hundreds of ships or sending them to the depths over the past couple of years. Surely, this won't be any different. Next to him, a man panics. He's heard of the Swallow's reputation. He dives into the rowboat, scrambling to untie the ropes and take himself back to shore. At a swift order from the quartermaster, fellow crewmates swoop down and capture him. Desertion is usually punishable by marooning, however in this case, they're short of time. So Black Bart hangs the offender in the rigging and orders his men to use him as a throwing knife target practice. Henry feels sick, but there's nothing he can do if he doesn't want to end up dangling next to his acquaintance, that is. Besides, he's not sure if the sickness is from the food, the scurvy, or the rampant syphilis infecting almost the entire crew. Only a few days ago, someone was caught with an unwelcome female guest. Of course, female guests were never welcome on board ships of that period. The lady had been dismissed, and the offending gentleman naturally killed. That's just how things worked with pirates. Anyways, on with the day. 8 o'clock rolls around, and it's bedtime. No. 
Seriously. Pirates on board all vessels followed a strict bedtime, and Black Bart enforced an 8 p.m. lights out. Men could continue to drink, but they must do so in the dark and only on the top deck. They needed to be well rested for the following day. It might have felt like kindergarten, but this was the supposedly lawless world of extreme violence. As it would turn out, the following day was Tuesday, February 10th, 1722, and it would be the day that brought about the end of the golden age of piracy, and Henry was right in the middle of it. Henry awakes with a start this day and bolts into action. Rolling off his hammock and skipping breakfast, all hands are on the guns. The fight is coming. The royal fortune and the swallow face off. Henry is ready with his cannon. Suddenly, the swallow pitches to one side, peppering grape shot through the decks of the royal fortune. Henry gets his foot blown off, which makes him a bit upset, but at least he'll get those 800 pieces of eight promised by Black Bart. Oh. Oh dear. Black Bart was one of the last great pirates, and with him gone, the golden age of piracy was well and truly over. With the captain dead, Ogle's men continue obliterating the ship, and then storm the royal fortune, seizing the men and its cargo. Henry's dragged away. He's hopeful of a more civil trial than those he's seen on board the pirate ship, but it's, it's wishful thinking. He's left in a cell to rot, with his wound turning gangrious. Doctors keep him alive just long enough to face a British trial in Cape Coast Castle. He's tried alongside every other surviving member of Bart's crew, and unexpectedly, hanged along with 51 other European pirates. And that is the end of Henry. Life tempted out to sea by the promise of riches, power, and escape from the tragic circumstances of life on shore. But also a life ultimately cut short, guilty of theft, murder, and facilitating murder. Henry should have been a banker instead. In real life though, People like Henry didn't feel that they had a choice. Wealthy landowners were forcing poorer farmers off their land. The Navy forcibly conscripted recruits. Banks would never even consider employing someone who wasn't from a prestigious family or educational background. On land, the rich were getting richer and the poor were getting poorer. And it wasn't much better on the high seas. In fact, the Navy sometimes delayed wage payments by up to two years to discourage deserting. Pirates were genuinely awful people who maimed, robbed, murdered, and spent all their takings on excess alcohol and women. Although on board condition were marginally healthier and fairer than those offered by the Navy, they were still pretty terrible. However, the strict codes allowed sailors to work, if it can be called work, with a complete understanding of the risks, taking home much more profit under something closer to their own terms. For this reason, it's understandable why so many turned to piracy and why so many were subsequently executed for their part in it. In the end, pirates were either killed or turned back to the side of the law as countries saw the need for investment in protecting their transportation. But that spirit of adventure and recklessness would live on.